Hello, this is Bunting, and today we'll be exploring some Ablation-style sound design using Operator, a bit of Vital, and a whole lot of Ableton stock effects. Let's get into it. Cool. Hope you like that. Before I get into the video though, I ask that you please drop a like, a comment, and a subscribe. That would really help me out. It would boost my channel and the algorithm and whatnot. And in those comments, be sure to drop any suggestions for future videos, all that. One more thing, uh, if you're interested in getting this project file as well as all the presets in it, I post all those on my Patreon where you can support me directly if you like me that much. All right, that's that. Let's start breaking it down with this absolute gnarly growl. And to start off, I'm just going to get a fresh operator here. Now, if you don't have operator, don't worry. Vital and other synths can get you quite similar and promising results. I will show. Okay. So I'm just going to get the D note because that's what it's just a nice deep sub note for us to work with. And to start off with, operator is sine wave. It's just a sine wave. Great news for us. We love sine waves. And when we start turning this level up, Make sure it's on this mode, by the way, this this exact thing right here. Um, what's happening is it's FMing. This sine wave is FMing this sine wave, and this FMs this, and this FMs this, and so on, until you get a lovely growly texture. You know, it just takes a little twiddling of knobs, and you already have that that monster sound. Very cool. At this stage, if you want to further mess with it, you can shift around this course. This essentially shifts the harmonic that the sine wave is hitting. You know, just pick one you like, and once we put all the effects on, you can go back and tweak it to your liking as well, get some different results. One more thing you might want to mess with at this stage is change the wave. So we have the sine wave, waves I like for this kind of valley texture. The saw three is really nice, uh, square three is nice. You know, it's, it's kind of just like low pass saws and squares. Don't want to get too deep into the full square, full saw, unless you really want to. You can do whatever you want, but for me, uh, for this growl, it kind of takes away from that formant texture. Okay. So now to give it that bendiness, right? That bendiness would be pitch moving. I'm going to turn on this pitch envelope and I'm going to drag this down. So it's not active until you drag this in a direction and dragging it to minus 100, it is following this shape, but backwards. See? Yeah, all that. And I'm gonna turn the time up. So it bends up nice and slow, nice and spooky, like perfect, okay? And from there, we're gonna start layering on some effects. The first thing I'm gonna do here is add a phaser. And that 500 hertz it's range, that mid-range-ish is the, really the sweet spot. It dials in those harmonics and emphasizes that vocaliness. You know, a lot of these effects are going to just be capitalizing on more and more vocal texture. I'm going to add another phaser, but I'm going to shift this one around. You know, have one static, have one move a bit. And you know what, for more movement too, I'm gonna add some subtle volume level automation. I meant to do this earlier, but it's never too late. Or is it? You see, and just those subtle harmonics shifting around makes it sound alive. Turning the dry wet down a bit because these phasers can take out a lot of the uh, high end presence, which we're gonna need. So to bring back some of the high end and just boost it overall, we're going to use an overdrive. This is just a distortion, but it's kind of EQ distortion type of thing. So we can distort just the high end to really give it that crispness and a bit of a boost. I'm going to turn the dry wet down a bit though, so it's not as prominent. Solid. Okay. Next thing for even further talkiness is this EQ. Now, normally you use the EQ to dial things back and to reel it in but we are absolutely reeling it out today. We're gonna be moving peaks all around. So I got two peaks. I'm gonna start wiggling them around with the frequency knob. Cool. 
Let's have this one. Cool. And for this, let's uh, get a notch. So the inverse of a peak, we can drag that down and select this notch here. I find the notch, peaks are nice, but the notch really emphasizes what the peaks are doing in a weird way. I'm just trying to find a nice position for it. Nice. Cool. So what did I do next here? So the next is what I like to call the secret sauce, if you will. And that is corpus. You hear this on a ton of ablation stuff. Well, now that I show you, you'll hear it, right? And essentially what corpus is, is um, it simulates something being resonated. So in this case, it's a beam. This base is resonating through a beam, a marimba, a tube, any of this stuff you can select. And once you selected it, I like the beam. I think that's what ablation uses a lot too. Maybe, don't quote me. But once you do that, you can tune it down. Ooh, you can shift it around if you really want, but I'm gonna just keep it in one position. Put it really low. And it's kind of a mess right now. You'll say, Bunting, this sucks. What are you doing? Stay with me. Because when you turn this to K down, it stops ringing out so long and it just becomes a nice textury layer. My other favorite knob on this besides the tune and decay is this inharmonic. This kind of tunes the harmonics being created. You hear it? I find turning it down is nice to just kind of decrease the amount of like metally ringing. You know, because a little is nice but too much and I feel like it starts to take over the sound sounds sick to me and I'll turn down the dry wet just a bit so it doesn't eat up so much of the crisp high end we've been working towards okay so up next we just have some nice post-processing we got all our sound design bits done with a little bit of boost in there let's just slam it with OTTs and other multiband compressions really crisp already before and after oh my gosh You'll notice we get some kind of noisy artifacts and to negate that, um, it's nice to turn up the time a bit and dial back the amount. And we can have two of these. You see more noisy artifacts and the secret sauce for me, I know I've said secret sauce like twice now, so it's not that secret anymore apparently, is this multiband dynamics. I stole this trick from Cursa's Racks. So shout out Cursa and shout out me for being a thief. So I turn up the input by nine, output by 10. This is kind of just, output by 10 is kind of just high shelfing, boosting the high end. But where it lies is in this downwards compression, I believe. So I drag this a bit to the left and started dragging this little thing down. And long story short, I'm not a multiband compression expert, but it really crisp up the high end, which is really nice for making everything sound full and beautiful. Okay. The final thing, which is optional, but I recommend it, is um, so let's uh, go to the beginning, hold shift, put our arrow key out, control G, right? And we just made an instrument rack. And this is useful because we can duplicate this whole thing. We can delete everything on the second one. And I duplicate it with um, control D, by the way. And just remove, oh, I didn't mean to delete operator. Okay. So yeah, just keep the pitch bend, and all we want is the sine wave. And then on this layer, what we're gonna do is EQ out the low end. Now, this is nice because not only is your sub going to be harder hitting and a lot cleaner, but the low end is t what tends to uh, create a lot of the noise coming out of the multiband dynamics uh, OTT stuff. So yeah. See, most people think, oh, dedicated sub, that's why you cut the lows. That's one reason, but the artifacts, like I said, are another. Sounds so much cleaner now. And the final touch, if you want just a hair more movement, MIDI control, make sure this is clicked on the MIDI clip, pitch band, and you can add a bit more control to the pitch band we introduce. Cool. Yeah. 
We can turn the chorus up. Get it more high endy. Lots of different results. And it's just fat, man. Like, I love it. Okay. But now the question remains, how do you make something like that in Vital? And to do that, I'm going to keep the same effects just for simplicity's sake. And I'm going to drag in Vital, our favorite synth here. Now, I've been like an operator lately, I'll be honest. Uh, but Vital is old, reliable. Okay. And it's free. And it works in any doll, not just operator. Um, okay. So let me freeze some tracks so it stops lagging and stop talking. Okay, so we're in vital. My CPU is relieved. We have a saw wave. And even with the saw wave, you have a bit of valley movement, you know, because of all the effects we put on. So use the saw wave if you want. First things first, let's reintroduce some of that pitch bend. Um, just because I think it's cool and very characteristic to the sound. Let's just... Cool. And let's FM the sine waves, right? So operator, like I said, is a bunch of sine waves FMing. So we can do the similar thing in Vital or any synth, really. So except we're going to turn the level down on our second oscillator. Let's get a third one, turn the level down, basic shapes, sine wave. Cool. Now we can go over here, select FM. And then we can FM again. So this FM by this, FM by this. And there you go. And you can automate these FMs just like the levels. Or you can use LFOs on them too. You can also try imitating some of these effects. You know, like having a phaser in the low ends, moving around maybe. Definitely mess with some EQ peaks and multiband compression. But I was just going off with Ableton stuff. I'm sure you can imitate this in a different DAW. The one thing you're going to have trouble with is Corpus. Corpus is really just an Ableton thing. One thing you can mess with to, as a substitute is maybe some convolution reverb can get you a vaguely similar effect. I don't know. It's worth a try. But yeah, as you can see, Vital can do this. But the problem, if you're in Ableton and have access to Operator, I'd recommend using Operator because its workflow lends itself better. So if I go in Vital here, you can tune things to harmonics, right? Using this harmonic series. Just like how we would have the course knob, right? But the problem is, there's this is only a sine wave. We can't select any different shapes. But the, but the workaround for that would be, so let's say we wanted a square three wave. We like that. Get a square wave from basic shapes, low pass it. It looks about three humps to me. I'm guessing that's like three-ish harmonics. Square three sounds good to me. And from there, you have to tune it manually to a harmonic, you know, which means that you would have to look up a chart of all the harmonics and tune it exactly to it if you want to hit some of the weirder harmonics versus just fifths and octaves, okay? But yeah, that's the weird thing. The other weird thing that Vital doesn't have over Operator, although you can still get good results as you can tell is operator has this fourth this fourth oscillator and this fourth oscillator just adds that little bit of extra oomph in the high end which is quite desirable if you ask me i've experimented with um fming the uh, noise oscillator with a sine wave in it but it was just sounding too clicky to me if you really want to mess with it try putting some stuff in this sampler and FMing that, maybe that can emulate a fourth oscillator. Otherwise, you might just want to end up boosting the high end more through more compression, more overdrive to make up for that. Yeah, but that's the growl in Vital, and that's the growl in general. You know, make it your own, flip it, spin it, do whatever, have fun with it. Our next contestants are these lovely wubs and moist textures here. Let me play it. And they have a lot of things in common. So this first wub, operator, corpus, a bunch of compression on it. Similar thing. I shifted the corpus around. I had an auto pan. Let me just start at here before I start rambling. So this wubbiness often comes from uh, like a higher harmonic. And to get a high harmonic, you know, you can just turn the course up. 
but we want a bit more movement. So what we're going to do is take this envelope and just move it around. So basically what's happening now is this level is being automated, which if you... If you listen, it gives it a bit more bubbliness to it. It's not so static, it's moving, you know. And as another layer, we can add a higher harmonic, having a slightly different envelope, and then just a little sine wave on top for that overall high end and texture. Beautiful, right? The, the sauce of it though, to really get it wubby beyond the FM is this filter. So turn on the filter, you can put this envelope to 100, right? And turn down this frequency all the way. And then shape this envelope. What this is doing, it's automating the frequency. Making it wub for us, making it do the work for us. And yeah, using this method, I've showed off something similar in my turning and sound video, I think. You can get a whole lot of wubs hitting different harmonics maybe get some different shapes in there, different kind of filter movement, and all that. To clean it up though, I put this auto pan on. Now with this auto pan, by default it's going to look like this, turn the amount up and the phase down, so now it's a mono, it's not phasing in stereo. Let's sync it, put it to whatever rhythm you want, you can have it faster or slower. I just wanted it a quarter note and inverted. So it starts on the beat rather than off the beat. Cool. And Corpus, it's the same Corpus from before. I just retuned it at a cool resonating harmonic that I liked. And I turned to the inharmonics to my taste as well. And of course, watch the decay on it. Yeah. So that's a wub. I like wubs. This is a similar wub, except I... One thing I did, I changed the wave here, right? I ended up automating this to give it different textures every hit. And I also automated this chorus, giving it that whoa, 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 versus if it, if it wasn't moving, it would be boring. That's cool, but having it shift just makes it that much weirder. Cool stuff. And same FM. Uh, I didn't FM this one. Feel free to copy all the parameters, you know. I'm not here to make the exact sounds, right? I'm here to give you techniques, so. But if you really want to copy, I'll go through all the stuff. Effects, saturator, just beeps it, crisp it up. Auto pan trick again. To articulate it more, corpus, tune at different, different frequencies. And the classic over compression. One quick little trick here is a little bonus. Sometimes you hear like those yoy sounds and that's from Redux, right? Just Redux on hard mode or on soft mode. You can try putting it before a lot of stuff too for a different result. That That's where you hear that like really robot -y yoy coming from a lot of the time. Okay, so this is the same bass. Same thing. In fact, I'm, I'm pretty sure I just copied it. A bit of automation forward, which is barely noticeable. Maybe makes it a bit brighter towards the end. But what's important here, beyond all these other effects, is the phaser. That It really dials in the harmonics. You can probably get a similar result just with FMing, but you know, I was messing around. This is what I came up with. Phaser in these ranges makes that mid-range harmonic clearer, which is really nice for these wubby sounds. Same processing, uh, same corpus, tweaked a bit. This auto pan though, I did turn down the amount a bit. And I turned up the rate so it really flutters. I did a one on 100 because that's a little dramatic. No dramatics here. Cool. Okay, don't worry, I'll show you how to make this in Vital too. Our last little part here, I lied, this is not the last. This little sine wave here, this is something you hear in quite a lot of stuff these days. So the first thing I wanted to do is just operator, I chose a nice frequency, I fixed the frequency so I could just pitch it wherever I want with this lovely knob. And then if we FM it by a really low frequency, essentially it's just following the sine wave around, it's going wow 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 wow, bending the pitch real quick. 
frequency. That's what frequency modulation is. It's actually magic. And the lower you get, you hear the frequency modulating rather than becoming its own wave. Okay. Uh, that besides, yeah, it's, it makes a cool layer to these type of bases. And this makes an even cooler layer. Essentially what this is, it's just saw wave with a bunch of random FM. The sauce is in this vocoder. Sounds like a bunch of random weird movements without it. But with it, it becomes pure moisture. And we like moisture here, I think. So if I were to remove it, you see I just added a bunch of FMs on a saw wave with this filter. This bandpass filter on 24 is just giving it some defined movement. You know, we will, we will more vocaliness too out of that. And this phaser is doing that as well. I changed it to space mode, which makes it makes it a bit more resonant, which I figured is good for the vocoder. So I did my high end boost trick here and put it into the vocoder. Now for these vocoder settings, to get the moist texture out of whatever you put in there, it's always worked the best though. Let's put it on modulator. Enhance is kind of like an OTT to it. A little bit of moisture, we can do more though. And for that, let's turn on our, our release. So it pops in and out quicker and depth. So that only the moisture seeps through. Cool. We can mess with the bands, make it more crunchy or more kind of watery. You know, it's up to your liking. And mess with this formant to shift it around. Typically, I would uh, kind of rainbow off this mid low end because of all of those kind of resonating harmonics. But in this case, it's ablation. I wanted to get weird. I thought those resonating harmonics sounded kind of all right. Overall, though, you want to make sure like your low, low end, that sub range is clean. So it's bussing, right? Cool. Okay, time for all this stuff in vital, right? So it's pretty similar in principle to what I showed you before. Let me just get this operator out of the way, get in vital. And we're going to start FMing sine wave. Spoiler alert. It's, just, it's not like we've never done that before, so... Okay, so sine wave, and let's get a harmonic here, and FM. Like I said with the uh, last vital conversion, what's happening with these envelopes, I, I didn't say that at all, okay. So what with these envelopes, what's happening, it's automating the level, right? And the level is essentially this FM in vital. So we can have a similar envelope type effect here. Let's turn it up to a higher harmonic. If you really want to count, you can count, count to like the eighth harmonic to match it exactly. Yeah, nice LFO on that oscillator, giving it that whoop, crazy. Okay. And then we can add another harmonic in, this one a bit higher up, this one FM by oscillator three. Let's get a different shape in here. Cool. Sounds pretty good. It might not be exact, but you can really just sit here and mess with it. The principle is going to be the same though. Then let's get a slightly different shape on our analog filter. Let's put it to 24. Ooh. I, I messed this up, but uh, as you can see, it's not exact, but quite similar. And by shifting it around to different harmonics, you can get different results, different automations, all that jazz, make it your own. And like I said before, if you really want to get different shapes in here, you're going to have to tune it by hand, maybe low pass it, you know, pitch it up and around. You know, have fun with it. Um, yeah. And I could remake each of these, but that's not what I'm here to do. I'm sorry if you thought I was. I'm too lazy to do this. I admitted it. No, but the principle is there. You know how to convert operator to um, vital. So if you really want to get the exact sounds, feel free to copy these parameters exactly. And I feel like I might as well uh, show these as well. Wait. 
Except, let, let me show you this because that might be a little different. I'm actually all over the place. I think I'm going to show you everything instead of being lazy about it. You know, I'm having a bit of character development here. I'm asking who I really am. Is this what I'm here for? Okay, so I'm just show you this whistle. Sine wave real high up. Uh, sine wave real low down. FM. Cool. Simple sound. Um, one thing I wanted to show you in terms of this. So this course knob here. What's happening with this course knob, the equivalent in Vital, sorry, this is kind of all over the place, but it's it's there. The knowledge is there, I promise, would be messing with this pitch or this harmonic. You see, you hear a bit of that coming through. Cool. And this final moisture bit, you can easily make something like it in Vital. If you simply, um, let me duplicate so we don't lose anything. If you simply just get a saw wave, kind of band pass it around, maybe get even uh, some FM in there like I did before, or a, a something. Let's hear it. The moisture. It's all about the vocoder. You know, you just want some clear, distinct harmonic movement coming through for it to get the moist factor. Yeah, but that's that for the sound design. Uh, I hope you're able to follow along in Vital somewhat with my minimal instructions, right? But if you have Operator, I recommend messing with it more. You know, even if it's not your favorite right away, you can get some new and interesting sounds you might not make. It can break you out of that routine workflow you're working on or whatever, you know. But that's all the sounds. Like I said, experiment, make it your own. That's what it's all about. And yeah. If you want to get some samples, if you like the drum samples, check out my site, buntingmusic.com. You can also get some lessons there. Um, everything, uh, all the samples are 40% off for the Christmas season. Ending soon, though, so if you want to support me want to get some cool samples, go there. Blah, blah, like, subscribe, comment, and also join the Discord. Everything is in the description. Join the Discord, though, if you want to hang out with me and other cool dudes. It's a little online community. It's a nice place. I like it there, okay? But I don't know what else to say. This is how I end my videos. Love you guys. Peace out.